morning. It's good to be here, and it's uh, good to see such a beautiful crowd this morning. Um, I had desire, Brother Earl, to come this way this morning. Uh, I am completely vacant of mind of anything prepared or anything to talk about. The only thing that I have on my mind this morning is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And I believe once you get outside of the realms of that, you're, you're lost and headed in the wrong direction. And I think we need to keep our sight and our focus on the blood that was shed there on Calvary. And we must have the blood applied. Um, as I was reading this week, not in the Bible, but in another book, I was reading this story about a condemned man. Uh, brothers pray. I'll take my time, and if the Spirit don't come, I'll sit down. I'm glad to see a man when he gets blessed, but I'm also glad to see a man when he's not blessed know to take his seat, and I will do that. But I was reading about this uh, this man, this condemned man, and he was condemned to die, and he really didn't believe that they was going to carry out the sentence on him, that he would be hung for the murders that he had committed. And that's the way we are in life. Uh, that's the way that I was up to a point that I really and fully became condemned of my sins. I didn't think that I was going to die. I did not believe that. I thought that I was going to live forever. But I had to come to the point and be convinced that someday I truly was going to die. And just like this condemned man, he didn't believe that the government was going to carry the sentence out on him because he had been tried and found guilty of his crime and the sentence pronounced upon him was death. Just like uh, because of original sin, the sentence upon us is death. And the only way uh, out of the sentence of death is we had to have a Savior, and that Savior was the very Son of God that came and died for us there on Calvary. But as this man kept uh, setting in his cell and just hours before the sentence was supposed to be uh, carried out upon him. Uh, he has asked him to send another letter to the governor for a pardon. And I'm so glad that the, the blood of Jesus Christ has been applied to the sins of my life and I have been pardoned of my sins and forgiven because of his personal, personal sacrifice there on Calvary. But as it came down, as the governor came back, he said, there'll be no pardon for your crimes. I will not intervene and they had to take this man to the gallows to be hung. And he asked before they took him down there, he said, I want to see three preachers. So they went and sent him three preachers. They came in and they prayed in his cell. And they took him down to the river just by the gallows and they baptized him and brought him back. And he had to pray some more. Even though they took him down to the river and baptized him, he was still a wet sinner. He was still praying for his sins. He had not been truly condemned and convicted of his sins. He did not want to die the death that he was about to die because he was enjoying this life of sin that he had been living. He was a, a pretty murderous man and a mean man, and he enjoyed all the, all the bad things of life. He enjoyed it, but I also read in God's Word, for sin is fun for a season, and we all have enjoyed that season, but there comes a time like when in my life that I had to be condemned to my sins, and that season was no longer Fun, I was condemned. I mourned for the shape that I was in, Brother Darrell. Me too. It troubled me for the shape that I was in, and I knew that I had to have a Savior. I knew that I had to have the blood applied. Well, this man came back, and they took him up to the gallows. And as he uh, got ready to put the noose around his neck, he said, let me pray one more time. Apparently he hadn't got through and he knelt down on the trap door and he cried out for God have mercy upon his soul. But that was the last words that came from that man's mouth as the death sentence was pronounced upon him. But as we are born, as we live, and as we die, we're given a space of time to repent, to come to the reality that we are sinners and separated from the love of God and that the wages of sin is death and all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Go. That's why we're given a space of time to repent. And if we fail to repent within that space of time, then we'll have to say amen to our own condemnation. We did not believe the report. We did not believe the alarm that was sounded. And just like any minister that is called, it is his duty to stand upon the wall and to sound the alarm. A trouble is coming this way. We don't know what else is coming this way today, but we know that 
death is coming. And children, let me ask you, is there anyone here that can say that I'm not ready this morning and I'm in need of a sinner? If that is your report, then you're in the right place to, to get started toward heaven's land. If there's anyone here this morning that's been afflicted by the sorrow of sin, now is the time, now is the accepted day to step out and say, Lord, have mercy upon me a sinner. Mm-hmm. Glory to the Lamb of God. Amen. As I was reading in God's Word about faith, brothers, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. And I read in God's Word, and I've always read and read this, but said if we had the faith the size of a mustard seed, we could say to this mountain, be moved, and it would be moved. But I'm looking at that, uh, Brother Darrell, just a little bit different now. I'm seeing the mountain as the trouble that's in our lives. If we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, if we have lost a loved one and we can ask in faith God deliver me from this mountain before me he can move that mountain if you have a loved one that's afflicted with drugs or alcohol if you say God remove this from their life if we have the faith at the size of the grain of the mustard seed it can be done I love the Lord I love the Lord and I do know this That with God all things are possible. All things. And I do know this. That without Him we can do nothing. Without Him. I I can't stand on my own. I can't live on my own. If I live, I live for the Lord. If I die, I die for the Lord. So therefore, whether I live or whether I die. I am the Lord's. And that's where I want to be. When it comes down to my last moment, my last breath, I want to fall into the hands of a resurrected Savior. Just just rest in His arms and take me on home. Glory to the Lamb of God.